Now welcome back again to the channel, I do agree. Today's video, uh, I'm not bringing you the best news, the, um, the cattle are coming down with a case of ringworm I think. Uh, you can see the patches of fur um, on the side of her neck and there's a few patches on each of them. And this one too and they have been doing a bit of scratching. So yeah, you see that patch there and some of the wailings, but it's not bad yet. We had um, a case of ringworm in the slats here last year at the, around the same time, it was February time, um, we tried to get rid of it with the scrub and it's not an easy thing to get rid of so it did um, persist in them for quite a while and uh, yeah they lost a lot of fur, didn't, they just didn't look well for a good few weeks and months um, last year so I, I tried to catch it early this time and I went to the vet and I got another scrub we'll get them into the crush and um, we're going to dose them with that today and again in another three days just uh, just to try and keep um, keep a handle on the ringworm because we don't want them to be losing all their fur and itching all over the place because they'll be very very stressed out with that and I don't have any better news for you in terms of the sheep I put them inside, I think it was Sunday or Monday, and I, mon I noticed Monday that um, they were showing signs of ORF, the lambs. So yeah, it was devastating. Devastating news to find that out. It's horrible to have ORF on the farm again. Um, I can count my blessings though. At least I didn't bring it into a flock of 100 yos or something like that. Although they would have been dosed as well. It is a bit confusing, so obviously the the O's the would have been vaccinated, uh, whatever, last year. The lambs wouldn't have been, it would have been on the farm they came in, but um, the O's can still be affected on their, on their elders. They get bits of blisters and that. Um, and yeah, they do get sore. Not one to give milk and everything. So it's a bit of an issue. It definitely is a bit of an issue. But I think I caught it early. Um, and the first day I went to the vet and I asked them what to give them. They gave me some, some of these black capsules. Not sure what they are, but gave me 12 black capsules. I gave them uh, one each that day and I was and I'm to give them another, another pill in, uh, it was six days from now, so it'll be tomorrow, Tuesday. I'll give them that second dose of those pills, but uh, they also said maybe just to spray their mouths with terimycin, any of the inf affected um, areas of that, give them a bit of scrub, kind of make it raw. So it was probably tough enough for the lambs, but um, I've been spraying them every day with a bit of terimycin, and it does sizzle up like it would in their feet with the scald. So I'd say it's do I'd say it's doing something. Um, we're going to dose them for a uh, fluke as well, so we use the same endo fluke that we use in the cattle. Um, and uh, yeah, just make sure make sure we take care of the fluke, because uh, it was suggested to me by a few people. It was a wet year, and there was a lot of fluke going around, so it has to be done. Um, we have a bit of... We have a bit of endo fluke there anyway. So we're going to dose them all with this for the ringworm. It's a uh, imaverol. Um, and you have to di you have to dilute it. Uh, one is to fifty. So I have two and a half liters there in the bucket, and I'll put uh, fifty ml in of this stuff, and uh, give it a good mix, and scrub it into all the spots that I see with a bit of a sponge there. So I can do that. And again, I'm wearing big heavy gloves because it is contagious.
Now, so it is Tuesday, um, six days after I dosed the, the lambs with the orf, uh, with these black pills, and sure, this is the second second dose of it. Um, but I'm also going to hit them, hit the oars with a bit of endo fluke to uh, make sure make sure they get their dosing for the fluke. And um, and I've been running terrymycin on all the lambs. Uh, now it's for the last six days, five, six days. So, still down the throat, they kind of chew on it. Make sure they don't spit it out. This lad is showing he's a bit of a blister there on his lip, and you can see it in the gums. But the terrymycin definitely helps keep uh, keep a cover on it. Now the vet told me um, the first day when I was giving it to kind of scrub scrub the uh, the scabs off, make it kind of raw. That way the terrymycin can get in and do a better job, but it's very severe on the land. So I just did that the first day, and, and I've just been spraying it there since. But I don't know, has he swallowed that? <coughs> no, dropped it. Of that now. Okay. And uh, I'll get the rest of them. This lad has been lame. Uh, back leg is very bad. I thought it was scald. Um, it did sizzle a bit with the Terry Mason, so I thought it was scald, but it doesn't seem to be improving on him. But um, yeah, I still give him the termicin into the toes. Um, but it's been about a week, and I don't see any improvement in him. But he's not. He's still doing fairly well. That swallowed the Terry Mason. <laughs> uh, I think he's good to go. Yeah, see, he's very lame there in the back leg. But, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll keep an eye on him. I'll get the rest of them lambs, um, then I'll be dosing the O's with uh, the bit of endo fluke. Now the uh, GoPro battery is about to run out, but I'll just show you me dosing one of the O's um, with this endo fluke. They get about 5 or 6 mil, uh, it depends on their body weight, but yeah, for sheep, they don't get too much. 5 or 6 mil uh, orally, um, just use this bit of a syringe, and uh, get them dosed with it. The flu.
how he's able to suck while she's being held. She probably kicks him or runs off uh, in normal places, but he's getting out there. He's definitely uh, the smallest lad out of the group, so I'll have to keep an eye on him. Anyway. There were signs of him hunching over last night and I was going to warm him up with a fan heater in the case of the ca uh, in the cab of the case. But I tubed him with her milk and then I put her put him on her like I'm doing here. And uh, he's doing fine. You can see his belly filling up there. But he's obviously not getting milk in normal uh, normal condition so keep doing this for a few days, make sure he's getting everything he needs. That's that job done. If he didn't have the orf, he'd be fine off, but I'm sure he's in pain himself. And I think she's in a bit of pain uh, with the blisters that she has on her elders as well. So there's, there's a bit of a situation there. Happy as Larry. That's it for today's video. I really hope you enjoyed it. Um, bad news with the orf, but it's about how you deal with it. Again, it'll kind of change plans for me in terms of the sheep for the time being, but we'll get it under control and um, we'll see how we are in a couple of weeks' time. The ringworm as well is an awful disappointment. I had it the same time last year in the slats. Of course, the bull and the heifer outside there don't have a touch of it because uh, they're nowhere near it. It's probably the moisture in at the shed that's causing it with the bad conditions or something. But we'll try and get over the ringworm and the orf and uh, see how we turn out in a few weeks' time. So thank you for supporting, watching.